Hey everybody, welcome to Board Online, Board Offline. Today I am bringing you how to play Varia. Now Varia is a two-player head-to-head combat card game where unlike a lot of these type of card games, you don't have minions that you're putting out on the board or anything like that. It is head-to-head. -head. It is you have a character, they have a character, or really I guess technically a class, but still you are an individual person and you're going up against their individual person, and it is just a, you know, one-on-one -on -one fight uh, to the death, supposedly. Uh, I, you know, you get to zero health points, I assume you're dead. So this has currently seven different classes, and we're actually going to be uh, taking a pretty deep dive into this game over the next uh, couple of months or so. Uh, every other video that I put out uh, for the next, like I said, seven uh, videos after this one, every other video will be, um, or I guess really 14, every other video will be Varia. Uh, one for each class. So we're going to kind of uh, really look into not only what all is included with each class, but then uh, some of the synergies and that sort of thing. But today I'm teaching you how to play Varia. Now, before I do that, I do want to mention our sponsor, Board Game Co. This is a great website to buy, sell, and trade board games. They have a, a great selection of games over on their site where uh, you can, uh, you, you know, buy games from them, of course. You can sell games to them, which is, you know, relatively common. You can trade games with them, though, which is really a cool thing, I think, that you have going over there because not only can you trade games with them, but they will actually connect with your Board Game Geek username, your account on BoardGameGeek, see what games you have currently on your trade list over there that you want, what games you have on your trade list that you're trying to trade away, and they will match all that up with what their stock currently is and create a trade list for you, and then you can decide what you want to propose, what sort of trade you want to propose. They have a, a really easy to use value system, so it's clear whether or not your trade will likely be accepted to begin with. And uh, it's a really neat system that I think you should check out. If you do go check them out, be sure to click on the link in the description below so they know I sent you over there. Board Game Co. makes it easy to buy, sell, and trade your way into a better collection. Also, I want to mention a giveaway we have going on right now. If you are outside of North America or Europe, I currently have a giveaway for Unbroken. If you're not familiar with it, with Unbroken, it is a solo only uh, board game, basically a dungeon crawl, again, solo only, and it was a Kickstarter, and unfortunately, uh, fulfillment, it seems like, was maybe partially completed in Europe, was almost 100% completed in North America, and other places outside of those two areas have really not received their copies up to this point, it seems. And so I wanted to, it's, it's one copy. I mean, what, you know, it's, it's only going to help one person, but I did want to do something to help out with that situation. I'm not affiliated with the company that ran the Kickstarter anyway. I'm not. A, I didn't back the game on Kickstarter. I I didn't even know about this drama until I obtained a copy of the game through a trade and then subscribed over to the forums on Board Game Geek, and that's when I became aware of all the stuff that's going on. So I just, you know, I purchased an extra copy off of Amazon because it is readily available in North America, and I decided I wanted to just help out a little bit to somebody uh, by sending a copy to them. So if you are outside of North America or Europe, check uh, the link in the description below, or actually check right here. There'll be a link to the video for where you can learn how to enter the giveaway. All right, so now we're going to get right down to Varia. And uh, just when, you, when you're watching this, I'm only using two decks so far. I'm using, oh, that was the other thing I want to mention. With the decks for Varia, unlike a lot of these, you know, uh, like unlike a collectible card game or even a living card game, each deck is completely its own thing. You, you know, the, you get a class deck and that deck, those 30 action cards plus a couple of extra cards that are in there, items and stuff like that, that's what you're using. There's no building the deck beforehand, any of that stuff. It is, you're able to dig down into that deck, really figure out the strategies of that deck and, uh, you know, and, and get to know it really well without having to worry about you know, well, should I take these cards out and add these cards in? No, the deck is what it is, and that is 
what you're using. So we're gonna get down to the table. I'm gonna show you how to play Vario. In this video, we'll cover the basic rules of Vario, which are found on pages four through 37 of their online PDF rules document. However, starting on page 38 of the rules PDF, players will find a play along tutorial featuring the Volcanic Warrior and the Shadow Assassin decks. This tutorial is recommended to new players and will help cement the basics of Varia in the minds of the new players. If the players don't yet own either of the two decks used in the tutorial, Guildhouse Games has provided all the cards necessary in the back of their PDF for players to print on their own. To play Varia, each of the two players will need something to track their life totals, such as a pencil and paper, as well as one class deck each, and a D6 and a D4. Currently, there are seven different class decks from which to choose in Varia. For this video, we'll focus on the Shadow Assassin and Volcanic Warrior. The six-sided die and four-sided die will be used to randomize numerical values on the cards. For example, this symbol means 3 plus 1d6, so in this case, 9, and this symbol means 3 plus 1d4, so in this case, 4. If a player is unable to locate a d6 and d4, there are plenty of free dice apps available on most phones. So now let's discuss what players will find on a card in Varia. At the top of the card is the card's name. To the left of that name is the cost of the card. To the right is the card's power for the D6 and focus for the D4. Down here is any card text and rules. And below that is the card's supertype and subtype and attribute requirements. Varia has four different types of cards, items, actions, tokens, and stacks. Items represent the equipment the player carries into battle and are not kept in the player's hand. Many items, such as the Bowie knife, allow the player to use them to perform actions as if they were a card in that player's hand. Actions make up the player's deck and are either attacks or blocks. Additionally, they are broken up into either physical or magical. Actions are the primary way a player will interact with their opponent. Tokens function just like regular action cards while they are on the timeline or in the queue zone. Any time a token would move to any other zone other than the timeline or queue, it is removed instead. Token cards can be distinguished by their white lettered names and a T at the bottom middle of the card. Stacks are how Varia tracks buffs and debuffs over time. If a stack is permanent, it remains in play until removed seen here. If a stack is depleting, it will tick down until finally being removed, as you can see here. Inside each class deck, players will find a deck list, a dice card for constructing cardstock dice, stack cards, which are the smaller half size cards, item cards, which have the gold coin at the bottom center, token cards, and a deck of 30 actions. To begin setup, the player must first take any item cards and set them on the table in front of themselves. These will not be added to the deck. Next, the player places the shuffled 30 action deck in front of themselves, and then sets anything else they have to the side as they will not need it unless specifically asked for. Each player begins the game with 10 action points and 30 health points. This 30 health points is their maximum health value. Even if a player would gain more health points than 30, they cannot go above this maximum. If a player ever reaches zero health points, they immediately lose the game. Players will need to track their health points and action points in whatever fashion they prefer, such as pencil and paper. The final step of the setup is to select the first player by whatever method the players agree upon, and then they're ready to begin playing. Varia has seven areas where cards can go, which are called zones. The seven zones are the player's deck, the area to the right of the deck is the item zone, the player's hand of cards is considered a zone, the timeline zone is in between the two players. When a player plans and performs actions, they do so on the timeline. When an action on the timeline is unable to be performed, that action and all actions that follow it go to the queue, which is considered a zone. 
at the end of each turn, all cards in the timeline get moved face up into the discard pile, which is a zone. Any player may look at any player's discard pile at any time. Whenever a card on the timeline gets replaced, it goes into the zone known as the owner's forgotten pile. These cards are placed face down and may not be looked at by any player. A turn of Varia consists of eight steps. The start of turn, movement, action, reaction, fast action, fast reaction, resolution, and end of turn. During the start of turn step, if it is the first turn of the game, players draw their initial hand of six cards. If it is any turn other than the first turn of the game, each player draws two cards during the start of turn step. There is no maximum hand size in Varia. During this step, each player also regains up to their maximum 10 action points. If a player ever needs to draw a card from their deck and the deck is empty, so here they draw one but need to draw a second one for the start of turn step, that player will shuffle the discard pile and the forgotten pile together to create a new deck and then finish drawing their cards. After shuffling the discard pile and forgotten pile into a new deck and drawing the remaining cards needed, the player also gains one stack of fatigue. Each turn has an active player and a reactive player. Players can be in two states relative to one another, either engaged or disengaged. The active player must choose to either engage, disengage, or not move. When players are engaged, attacks are not at risk of missing due to distance. However, when players are disengaged, any attacks that do not have the ability ranged will miss, as if they were facing a block with a very high focus. After the movement step is the action step. During the action step, the active player plans actions by placing cards from their hand onto the timeline, creating moments that will exist for this turn. To plan an action, a player takes an action card from their hand and places it into the timeline. Actions must be planned in the order they will be performed. So this would be action one. So this will be the first action, which takes place in moment one. This means that the next action played must be moment two, and then moment three, four, and so on. Time is one of the principal resources in Varia. Each action a player plans takes up a moment in time on the timeline, and every turn must have at least one moment. It's important to remember that only the active player is able to create moments on the timeline by taking actions from their hand and putting them onto the timeline like this. For every action beyond the first the player plans, an additional moment is created on the timeline. So for instance, if the active player plans four actions, as you see here, the turn will have four moments. This is referred to as establishing the timeline and sets the number of moments available for both players for the remainder of the turn. To reiterate, step three, the action step, is the only step where moments may be created. It's also important to realize that some actions may take up more than one moment, as you see here. This action takes two moments to plan and will occupy the second of the two moments. In that case, be sure to leave room for that other moment. And so this actually is a timeline of five moments despite having four cards. Weapon and armor item cards can be used as if they were action cards in the player's hand by simply placing them into the timeline just as the player would an action. However, at the end of a player's turn, the item is simply placed back into the item zone and not into the discard pile. For all intents and purposes, items are basically cards that are always in a player's hand. Once the active player has planned all of their actions, establishing the timeline, the reactive player now plans actions from their hand into the moments created by the active player. Keep in mind that no new moments may be created, so the player must make use of the moments that are given. An example of how the reactive player may play their actions would be like this. Once the reactive player has played the reaction step, players enter the fast action step. Now that players have set their plan, they are given the opportunity to alter it. During the fast action step, the active player plans fast actions. While fast actions may be played during the action step, it's often best to wait until the fast action step to play them. 
fast actions are indicated by the fast keyword and also have the lightning bolt symbol here. Players may plan fast actions during this step as a combo or as a replacement. Let's say the player wanted to use the Bowie knife, which as you can see can be used as a fast action. And they wish to use it to replace Transfusion Drago in moment two. The player would take the Bowie knife and plant it into moment two and then take Transfusion Drago and place it into the forgotten pile face down. And that's all it takes to replace an action. But now what if instead the player wanted to use Bowie Knife as a combo with Transfusion Draga instead? How would that work? The player would take the item card and plant it on the timeline in moment two, just as before. Except this time Transfusion Draga would stay. When moment two is resolved, the player would treat Bowie Knife and Transfusion Draga as if they were a single card with combined name, cost, power and focus, rules text, super types, subtypes, and alignment requirement. The resulting combo would be Transfusion Draga Bowie Knife. Performing the combo would require a total of five action points, two plus three. The power of Transfusion Draga Bowie Knife would be two plus two D6. And the focus would be two plus two D4. The rules text for this combination would read fast, on hit, you regain health points equal to the damage dealt by this action. Finally, the action would be a magical physical attack with subtypes Dexterity Vampiric. As you can see from this one example, creating a combo can be quite powerful. Just remember that when making combos, attacks and blocks cannot be combined. After taking one or more fast actions, the active player will pass, at which point the reactive player will take a fast reaction step. After they take any fast actions that they wish, it will go back to the active player who now can take more fast actions. And it will go back and forth like this until both players have passed. As usual, during both the fast action and fast reaction steps, no new moments may be created. After the fast action and fast reaction steps have been completed, the resolution step begins. During this step, players will pay for their actions as each moment is resolved. Each moment is essentially a mini turn and is resolved in four steps. The first step of the resolution is the payment. Both players pay the action point cost of their planned actions for the moment. So in this first moment, the active player will pay four action points and the reactive player will pay two action points. The next step is the start of moment step. Any start of moment effects on the cards in the current moment occur. Start of moment effects are indicated with an hourglass where the sand is in the top of the hourglass. The third step of the resolution is clash. During the clash, attacks roll their focus die and power die in an attempt to damage the opponent. Blocks will also roll their power and focus die in this step as well to mitigate damage or to avoid getting hit by an attack. We'll discuss that in a bit more detail momentarily. After the clash, any end of moment effects occur. End of moment effects are indicated by an hourglass where the sand is in the bottom of the hourglass. Anytime both players have a start of moment or end of moment effect that needs to be resolved, the active player will always resolve it first. In the event an individual player has multiple start of moment or end of moment effects, that player will decide the order that they are resolved. Now let's discuss the clash a little bit more. An action's power is a number found inside the square shape at the top of the card. It will also be inside either a spear or a shield, depending on if it is a attack or block. An action's focus is the bottom number found inside the triangle. During the clash, the attacking player will roll both their power and their focus. The blocking player will do the same. The first thing that must be determined is if the attack hits. If the attacker's total focus is greater than or equal to the blocker's total focus, then the attack hits. If the attacker's total focus is less than the blocker's, it misses. Once a hit has been confirmed, then players compare their power. If the attacking player's power is greater than the blocking player's power, then the blocking player receives damage equal to the difference. 
However, if the attacking player's power is less than the blocking player, then no damage is dealt to either player. Now, in the case that two attacks go up against each other, both attacks are considered to automatically hit, though you should still roll for focus. Then players will compare power, and whichever player has the higher power will deal damage to the other player. Finally, if the active player is using a ranged attack and the reactive player is not, then the active player can deal damage to the reactive player, but the reactive player cannot deal damage to the active player. Now let's discuss the queue for a bit. In the event a player cannot perform an action, say perhaps in this case they ran out of action points to perform Spellbreaker, that action will enter the queue in the exact same order they were planned. This also means any actions that were planned after Spellbreaker would also enter the queue. Queued actions will not resolve during the current turn and instead will try to resolve in the following turn. Keep in mind that this moment still exists, which means that if the reactive player is able to pay for actions in that moment and beyond, that player still gets to resolve those actions. So now, when the player enters the next action step, any queued actions must be planned first, and then they may begin planning further actions in the timeline. And keep in mind, if there are multiple actions queued, they must be planned in the order that they were queued. Also, it's important to realize that actions may not be played directly from the hand into the queue. Also, a reactive player may not create moments with their queued actions. During the end of turn, players put all cards on their timeline into the appropriate piles. Actions will go into the discard pile and items into the item zone. The reactive player now becomes the active player and vice versa. When an action is planned in a moment with nothing to oppose it, that action is considered to be unopposed. An unopposed attack is treated as if it were facing a 0-0 action with no dice. If an action were ever to become disrupted, it is turned sideways. From that point forward, actions planned to clash with the disrupted action are treated as if they are unopposed. If an item becomes ruined, it is also turned sideways. From that point forward, it cannot be used to perform actions and any abilities that it had no longer function. When an item becomes ruined, any actions that were planned with it become disrupted. When a ruined item becomes repaired, return it to its original orientation. That item may now be used again as if it were never ruined. If a player is instructed to exchange an action, the player takes the entire action into their hand and then the player takes an action from their hand and places it into that previous action's place on the timeline. It's also important to realize that exchanging an action does not count as planning an action. This can be important for certain effects in the game. If a card ever asks a player to summon an item, take that item from outside the game and put it into play in their item zone. And one final note, there are lots of cards in Varia. If a card rule text ever contradicts the standard rules of the game found in the PDF, the card will always trump the game rules PDF. So there you go. That's how to play Varia. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to come back for more videos uh, in the future for Varia. Like I said, every other video for the next month or so is going to be uh, a dive into a specific class for Varia. You got to kind of see a little preview of the different classes there at the very end of this video. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you like my channel, please subscribe. And until next time, if you're bored online, bored offline.